Robin Vincent. Welcome to our Molten Research Labs here in a very sunny Norfolk. Today we're looking at Windows 8.1. We're going to look how you tweak it for audio production. The secret source, if you like, of the audio PC builder. Uh, it turns out that it's quite a long video because I go into quite some depth about uh, the reasoning behind things and that kind of thing. Uh, so if you do want just a, a very quick checklist as to what the tweaks are, then head on over to the website and you'll find them listed beneath the video. Uh, so sit back and enjoy it as we uh, show you how Windows 8.1 can be tamed to be an awesome music production system. Before we get to the Windows tweaking, let's have a look at the BIOS. The BIOS is the basic in-out system for the motherboard. It's that sort of scary place where all the basic system bits and pieces are done. Now you've probably got a different motherboard to me, um, so I'm just going to look at what to look out for in the BIOS, things that are going to help your system as a whole to run more smoothly, particularly if you've got uh, up-to-date and current technology. So the first thing I would do is check the BIOS version, make sure that's up-to-date. Uh, if not, then update it. The things you are looking for are anything which restricts the CPU or tries to make the CPU run slower or um, change speed in any way. So for instance, well, this, this is a gigabyte board that we're looking at here. I've got some uh, advanced CPU features and in here we'll find some culprits. If we look down here, down the bottom, hyperthreading is good, you want that. CPU enhanced halt, you do not want that. Uh, turn that off. Uh, anything which is about C3 or 6 or C1 states, anything that talks about that kind of thing, those are power states, you don't want them. Uh, disable them. Uh, CPU thermal monitor, no, that's bad. We don't want it to change speed as it gets hot. We want to have adequate cooling that will do that. Um, and the iced uh, function, which, you know, I can't remember what that means anymore, but it's to do with uh, turbo mode, but actually it works differently to how it used to. So now we want to turn that off because that will vary the CPU speed depending on temperature and other factors. We don't want it to do that, so we're going to stop it from doing that. So anything that is going to change the speed of the CPU is going to reduce it for power reasons or for temperature reasons, then those are the sort of things we want to disable. If you mess everything up, it doesn't matter. There's usually a, a way to get it back to its standard settings, which is as good as anywhere. So if you reboot and it doesn't start, then just go back into the BIOS and uh, set it to its default settings. There's a setting down here that says Optimize Default and uh, that'd be great and start again from there but a little bit of tweaking is going to help you enormously in windows okay let's get on into windows 8.1 so here we are windows 8 here's a quick tip uh, click on the desktop right click the taskbar properties uh, go to navigation and if you go down here when i sign in go to the desktop instead of start that means you boot to the desktop and show my desktop background on start are two very worthwhile things to do so that now when I press this I get the start menu over the top of the desktop rather than into a completely different screen. So that's that. So tweaks then. Let's get on with that. The first thing you want to do is run reg edit in order to do a registry tweak that we're going to need for something later. So you can do that simply by clicking on the start button or pressing the start button and type reg edit and it will come up over here straight away automatically very quick so let's bring that up go to edit find and type in deck 35 find okay that's not what we're after press the F3 key and it will find the next one there that's what we want we want an entry which has something called attributes which is currently set to 1 this is the only one it will find, you can't mistake it from that deck 35 entry. Double click it, put the value data to zero and click OK. Now this is about processor parking, which actually in Windows 8 is already automatically set to be what it should be. However, it's good to check that because you never know when some kind of update is gonna change that situation. You don't have to understand what I'm saying, I'll show you to it in the power settings uh, in a little while. One other thing to do in the registry is, let's just go straight back up to the top again. Select on there, edit, find. Uh, and if you put in here menu, 
show delay. See that menu show delay? And it's going to find those. There should be three or four entries. Uh, menu show delay is how long a menu takes to appear on the screen when you hover over it. And for some reason they set it to 400, which is almost like half a second, which just seems bonkers. Now a lot of people would recommend putting this to zero. I don't agree. I think if you put it to zero then menus pop up too quickly and you can't always get your mouse passed without something popping up inadvertently. So what works for me is 50. 50 milliseconds or whatever it is that's talking about seems to be about right. So you set it to 50, press OK, press F3 and it will find another one. There we go. Another one set to 400. Set that to 50. Hit F3, and there's another one. Hit F3, that should be the lot. Yeah, see, now on, now on uh, just finding the same thing again. So that's a registry, let's get rid of that. So the rest of the tweaks we'll do from the control panel, at least to start with. So let's just go through that nice and methodically. So to get to the control panel, go down the bottom left, right click, and you'll get this wonderful little admin menu come up, which is very useful for all sorts of things. Go to Control Panel. This will probably be set to uh, to this for you. If you go to View By at the top and go Small Icons, that's a much easier way of getting and navigating your way through the Control Panel. So let's do it alphabetically and as logically as we can. Action Center will come back to that, funnily enough. So going along, going along, going along, going along. Date and Time. Click on that. Internet time, change settings. It's set to synchronize with uh, with time on the internet, so uh, you uncheck this so that it doesn't wander off onto the internet to try to check that its time's right. It's a very minor tweak, but it's a tweak nonetheless, particularly if you don't need to go on the internet. Power options, this is quite an important one. Let's have a look in here. Usually set to balance by default. What you want to do is show additional plans there go to high performance and then change plan settings. Turn off the display, don't need it to do that. Turn that off and then there's another button here that says change advanced power settings. Let's click on that. Okay, so under here you've got a whole list of stuff. Look under hard disk, turn hard disk off 20, after 20 minutes, no. Thank you, put that on zero. Hit apply, come on down a little bit. USB settings, this is a suspend setting, this is where it suspends various USB ports, you don't want it to do that if you've got a sound card attached, so set that to disabled, power buttons and lid, that might be interesting if you've got a laptop, and processor power management, this is the last one here, so that registry edit I did has brought up this line here which you might not have seen before, which is processor performance core parking min cores, now that needs to be set to 100%. Now it's set to 100% by default in Windows 8. In Windows 7 it was set to 10%, so it was a worthwhile tweak to make sure that all the cores, uh, all the cores within the, within the CPU, so if you've got a quad core system or a dual core system, that they don't go to sleep or get parked, but rather that they're always 100% available at all times. So that's what that's about. It's a good one. Uh, minimum and maximum state, again on a laptop in particular, that can be set to sometimes like 5%. The minimum setting you want it to be 100% all the time so maximum and minimum need to be 100% that is pretty much it in there so the important ones are the USB suspending and the hard disk turn off that's power so once you've got back to this screen you need to make sure you click on save changes so that it's set to high performance and back up here we can go to control panel again system this is the next important entry this just gives us stuff about Windows 8, but what we're really interested in is advanced system settings, which is there. Brings up another window. This is sort of the place where you've done tweaks for years in, in all sorts of uh, versions of Windows, and it still pretty much remains the same. There's an entry which says performance. Click on settings. So if you want to calm down the, the graphics a little bit, then I'd recommend unchecking all of these top ones here. So the animate the enable peak and the fades. Everything else is, is pretty much benign, but these top ones do require a bit of you know, processing power to cope with being see-through or transparent or to animate things up and down. Um, but 
actually with Windows 8 I think it loses a little bit of its charm if you take all those off and the animations are actually quite nice and quite unobtrusive and don't take any time similar to OS X you know some of the animations of Windows opening and closing are actually quite pleasing so it's up to you take those on with them off you know if you're finding you have got some uh, some problems going on then, t then turn all those off and see what happens what's more important in this bit is under the advanced tab adjust for best performance needs to be background services the reasoning behind this is so that your audio driver is getting precedence if you like so the audio driver is going to have more of the attention of the CPU than the program and that's going to maintain a glitch free environment that's the idea anyway so that's what we find when we do that uh, virtual memory this is something this is quite interesting this has changed it used to be that uh, you would set 1.5 times your actual memory and that would be the virtual memory or the swap file the paging file uh, it's called all those sorts of things but these days you have massive amount of memory I mean this system's got 16 gig and so that would be something like uh, 24 gigs of hard drive space being used as the uh, page file but when you leave Windows to do it, it actually uses more like two and a half times. So you're looking at 48 gigs worth of uh, paging file being used on the drive for no real reason. I mean, your memory is big enough that you don't really need a paging file, but it's worth having something there, you know, just in case of emergencies or something. So uncheck automatic, go down to custom size and set something a sensible size like four gig, for instance, which is 4048 and 4048 set it to the same so it's not having to resize itself so it's not having to use the hard drive to resize uh, the page file at any time just keep it the same click on set so when we reboot we'll find that the amount of hard disk space being used by the system would have gone down and that's nice the other thing you could do here is remote assistant connection to this computer you can uncheck that you know I can't really remember why but it used to be something so that's that there it says we can restart we will restart later we'll finish our control panel bit so that was system uh, moving on user accounts change user account settings and bring that down to never notify that's more of an annoyance removal than anything else so that you don't get this constant oh are you sure you want to do that coming up all the time so we put that down to nothing thank you back to all control Windows Defender now this is assuming you don't want antivirus software or anything attached. If you're running a system which is not on the internet and you know you plan to put it on the internet, then by all means turn off this because it is a resource drain yeah, to a degree. You can run with antivirus software on and you'll probably do really well. If you ever do get problems, then you want to be using an antivirus that you can easily disable. That's the best thing. Uh, rather than going without it, you can always just turn it off when you're making music. But in Windows Defender, you can uncheck real-time protection, go to administrator, uncheck, turn on this application. And that will go, oh my goodness me, but that's good. So Windows Defender, uh, Windows Update, this should also be set to change settings over here and never check for updates. That's so you don't get an update by accident because sometimes updates are not always good. It's a useful thing to update your system but it's not always good to have it automatic because something might change and you're not aware of it. It's better to be aware of it and do it purposefully and manually. Okay, after you've gone through all of those, you then head back to the Action Center, which is going to have highlighted things that you've done. And what you want to do is turn off. Turn off that. Turn off that message. Turn off that message because you don't want to hear about all these things that you've done. So that's a control panel. There are a couple more tweaks. Uh, the first one is to, you need to run a command window, so go to the bottom left, go to command prompt admin. That brings up our good old fashioned window up here. And what you want to put in is power cfg.exe, then slash hibernate off. Do you see that? So power config.exe space forward slash hibernate off. Hibernation uses up a massive amount of hard drive space and the idea being that your system kind of goes to sleep and remembers everything that's open all that sort of thing so it can very quickly start up again. You know who cares about that who wants to do that so and it uses up a ton of hard disk space so when you turn this off you just press enter nothing happens nothing but if you get it wrong it will tell you so 
that means that it has done what it should have done. Okay, exit that. Uh, the last one is the MS Config uh, from old systems. MS Config is the place where you do your startup. Uh, what programs run when the system starts. That no longer exists. You now have to do it in the task manager. So if you right click on the taskbar, select task manager, you get this very uninspirational window. You go for more details, it's suddenly a lot more interesting. There's all sorts of things you can see here. You can see what's currently running and all the background things. There's a lot of people things a lot of things people like to do with services, I like to turn various services on and off. I'm not that fussed to be honest. I'm just more interested in the startup. So if you go to startup tab at the top, this shows you what actually is running when you start your system up. So for instance, Adobe Reader is always a, a pain in the ass, as is Apple. Anything you've got QuickTime installed, it's going to be putting those things there. And it suggests what sort of impact it has on your startup as well. The best thing to do probably is just to disable them all. So you just select one disable it, select, disable. Uh, if you're not entirely sure what they are, you think it might be an important system file, for instance this is the graphics tray module, then leave them and uh, only disable them if there's a problem. But obvious things like quick time, disable, what's on module manager, disable. Okay, as I say, you can do things with services that I've never really seen that as being a massive help. I'm only really in troubleshooting, not for general tweaking. Uh, so that's it. Let's have a quick look at the hard drive size. Let's do a restart and see what that then says. So to restart, you can right click in the bottom left hand corner, go to shut down, restart. Okay, after our restart, we've now got 214 gig free, whereas before we had 203. So we've just uh, gained ourselves 11 gigabytes, which is pretty good. We like that. So Windows 8, uh, start menu, lack of, yeah, oh my god, there's no start menu, how can I possibly even run a program? Well, here's a, here's a very quick tip for you, anything that you're actually going to use on a regular basis, uh, or at all ever, right click, pin to taskbar, right click, pin to taskbar, right click, pin to taskbar, then get rid of it, it doesn't need to be on your desktop, and then there you are. This becomes your start menu, your taskbar on your great big screen. Loads of room for dozens of different applications and then you just click on them and they run. It's really simple, it's really simple. But then of course there's the other thing which is the, uh, the start screen. Oh the trauma, I can't cope. What's going on? Oh there's all sorts of things trying to talk to me. Ah, It's just a start menu, I mean for heaven's sake what's the matter with people? Don't be such a wuss. You need to take control. Okay, you don't like this stuff? Fine. Change it. Make it work for you rather than running around with your hair on fire thinking the world's come to an end. So, you know, if you don't like this, get rid of it and change it into something else. To this. Look at that. See? Desktop. Desktop. Start menu. Desktop. Start menu. You know, just put on it whatever it is you just want to run. You don't want to run any of the other stuff. Don't have it on there. There you go. How easy was that? So, cool, that's Windows 8 tweets ready for audio. Go make some music. So there you have it. I hope that was useful to you. Windows 8.1 tamed for music production. Uh, all that sort of information is kind of generally available. It's not really as secret as most people make out. Uh, but I thought it'd be helpful just to bring it all together into one place for you good people. So. There you go, off you go, make some music. Cheers.